Okay, listen, I'm going to start with just review of the problems from Friday. How is my screen big enough for you to see that document right now or not? That no, but we can pin it to make oh, yeah, yeah. it. Do that. Do the old pin. I think if you pin this right now, it should show up just on your screen. And then just to review, um, remember we are using, I'll actually start with number four because that's the formula we start with. We're using the force formula. So determine the force applied to a 785 kilogram car. That's your mass that accelerates at 3.25 meters per second squared. That's your acceleration. So remember the equation we were using Force equals MA or force equals M times A. And then when you plug those in, and multiply them, you should get 2551. And the unit is Newtons, 2551 Newtons. So again, just a review from Friday, the formula we started with is a formula for force. Force is mass times acceleration. And so far we've given you all of those. So in these givens, they give you the mass, they give you acceleration. The difference today is you'll have to solve for acceleration. And you already know how to do that. You've already used acceleration equals V naught minus, or VF minus V naught over T. So that's the only difference today is that you'll have to solve for acceleration first to plug that in. Okay, so I'll give you one more, just go over one more here. And I'll actually try to make a copy of this and send it to you so you can check your answers. Most of you already got this and turned it in, so you're fine. But if you didn't, it's a good idea to know the outcome so you can work towards it. Okay, number two here is determine the acceleration. So if we start with, F equals MA, we have to solve for A for this one. And remember, because we're multiplying by M, we have to do the opposite. We're going to divide each side by M. So A equals F over M. And when you plug in your givens, your force is 1250. Your mass is 575. And you should have got 2.17 meters per second squared. So again, that's what you did on Friday, but just a little review to get started. Um, they're not much different today, except like I said, instead of them giving you the acceleration, you'll have to solve for acceleration using the acceleration formula that you've already used so far. You guys already know how to do that with the acceleration formula so far. And cue the close-up of Coach Steph. Okay, you can unpin that now. <laughs> yeah, you don't need you don't need the close-up pinned on your screen. You can unpin that, and then I'm going to share a screen. Take out your notes from um, last week. We'll add a section to those notes. So it'll be the second. It'll be the second number one the second page number one. Let me pull that up. Welcome back. All right, hold on just a minute. Okay, you should see the acceleration um, PowerPoint there. So again, you should be on the second page number one where it has the learning targets at the top again. And short lecture today. So I'll start that and fill in as we go through this. Physics fans? 
Today, we're going to go back to Newton's second law of motion and find out what happens when we use the kinematics definition of acceleration. We know that Newton's second law is deceptively simple. F equals M times A. All right, so just filling in that F equals M times A on that middle slide. I still the old crackling fire going again. Well, there's more to it. For one thing, the kinematics equations will factor into this because we are dealing with motion and the definition of accelerations. We can use the definition of acceleration and Newton's second law with mass, initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration to time. We can use that to determine the force needed to change the motion of an object. All right, fill that in at the bottom of page one there. And again, all that is saying is what I said, that instead of giving the acceleration already solved for you, you'll use VF minus V naught over T and then plug that in for A. To change the motion of an object. Accelerations, remember from kinematics, A is V minus V naught over T. Parentheses are important, or final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Combine that with Newton's second law, and with a little algebra, I can solve these problems in only one step. F equals M, the quantity V minus V naught over T. And you And again, what I would do, you can do it the way that it's written down at the bottom there, um, plugging the acceleration formula into the A part of the force formula. But sometimes I think it's better to solve for A first and then plug it in and multiply it times M. Same thing, it's showing the same thing on that right here. Um, they just took the entire acceleration formula that we've already learned and worked with and plugged it in for A here. You might be tempted to do this, and there are problems where this is certainly appropriate. There will be other problems where we'll solve them step at a time. What's the acceleration? And then, what was the required force? So, Newton's second law and acceleration. Well, you know me. Brand new shiny physics equation. Let's take her out for a test spin and see what happens. Whenever I have a problem, first thing I have to do is... A physics student on a snowboard with a combined mass of 90 kilograms starts downhill. You know, snowboarding. Gotta be a cool cat somewhere up in the Rockies fixing to bomb a hill. Well, if that 95 kilogram student starts down the hill with an initial velocity of 2.5 meters per second and then accelerates to 18 meters per second in 7.5 seconds, determine the student's acceleration and the force pulling the student down the hill. I've read it. So after I read it, I, and there we go, bombing the hill. 95 kilograms, we start at 2.5 meters per second and accelerate to 18 meters per second in 7.5 seconds. Read it, diagrammed it. After I diagram it, I list the mass of 95 kilograms, the initial velocity at 2.5 meters per second, the final velocity at 18 meters per second, the time of 7.5 seconds, what's the acceleration and the force? Okay, so listen, take those givens that are on there and then come up with the acceleration first. Remember, acceleration is VF minus V naught divided by T. And then you'll plug it into the F equals M times A. Try that. Take a, few, take a minute or so to come up with those. And then I will show you um, the correct answer. So let's practice that real quick. Again, use those givens to find the acceleration first. A equals VF minus V naught divided by T. And then once you get A, you can plug it in for the A of F equals M times A.
Work through that on your PowerPoint real quick. Ask me questions if you have them. And I will continue to play the slide in about 10 seconds. Again, if you forgot how to solve for A, we're going to go over that real quick. Make sure you type it into your calculator the correct way. And then you use that answer to plug into F equals M times A. Well, well I, need I need to solve, solve for, acceleration. for acceleration. So the acceleration, acceleration equation, equation is, is A equals V minus V naught over T. Don't, don't have to do any algebra. algebra. And parentheses, and parentheses are, are important. important. Plug, plug and chug, chug go. go. What, what is the acceleration of our student? student? Indeed, 2.07 meters. Okay, so again, um, the acceleration, 2.07 meters per second squared. You will now take that and multiply it by mass, and that will give you the force in newtons. Per second, per second squared. Square. But, but what, what was, was the force, force pulling, pulling that student that down the, the hill? hill? Well, well, for that... For that the deceptively simple Newton's second law, F equals MA. Or the mass and the acceleration go. Right, 186.62 Newtons. That's how much pull is taking you down the hill. Newtons, the unit for force, is named for the cookie, the fig Newton. No, it isn't. It's named for Sir Isaac Newton. And actually, in the English system, we use pounds. But let's look at our second. A red Dodge truck with a mass of 950 kilograms accelerates from rest to a final velocity of 55 meters per second in two seconds. Remember, too, when you guys see a problem, the first thing you do, I, like, I still like to, I know it's difficult on the online stuff, but I still like to circle the givens on there. You can, I guess you could highlight them um, with the online stuff or bold type them or bold italicize, whatever, underline. Um, but you see the givens here. You got your mass, um, rest, your V, your, your v naught, your final velocity, and your time. So it hasn't asked you yet what you're going to solve for, but just identifying the givens is step one. And hopefully everyone is able to do that um, without me listing them out or which ones you're looking for. Well, wait, 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 wait. 55 meters per second, that's 130 miles an hour. From zero to 130 in two seconds? There isn't any truck does that. No, this one did. That's Bill Maverick's Little Red Wagon, a popular attraction on the NHRA circuit. While it is quick, its whole goal isn't to go as fast as it can from one end to the other. See, Bill Maverick, and then later his sons, were capable of driving the front wheels with the steering wheel in the front, turning these as the traditional mode goes. But they were also attached to the boogie wheels in the back so that he was able to use those to control the direction the car is going in as well. And then Bill Maverick would stand on it, and up it came. For the entire quarter of a mile, this dragster would pick the front end up and go from one end to the other, dragging sparks all the way. Quite the fan favorite. But wait, what kind of a truck is that that it can pick the front end up in the air? Well, it does help that he was using a 7.7 .7 liter, 500 cubic inch, multiport fuel injected, nitromethanol burning Hemi Chrysler engine into a special transmission, and up she goes. So our little red Dodge truck with a mass of 950 kilograms accelerates from rest to a final velocity of 55 meters per second in two seconds. Determine the acceleration truck and the force applied. I've read it. After I read it, the next thing I do is... Okay, so listen, using your calculator right now, and you can write it down in the paper also on the notes, but most of you can just, and I don't want you to get used to this because you still have to show your work when you, when you guys do the assignment, but figure out the acceleration, 
and then also plug that in to figure out the force. See if you can come up with the two, two correct answers for this problem. The acceleration of the truck. Remember your V naught is zero. So VF minus zero divided by two. And then take that answer and multiply it by the mass of 950. Try that on your calculators real quick. Is. And here comes our little red wagon rolling down the track from 0 to 55 in two seconds. Now I list the mass at 950 kilograms, the initial velocity 0 meters per second, the final velocity 55 meters per second, and the time of two seconds. What is the acceleration and the applied force? Well, the acceleration equation, A equals correct. And remember, parentheses are important. Plug and chug, go. What's the acceleration? Indeed, 27.5 meters per second squared. So what force was that drivetrain capable of applying to the little red wagon? Newton's second law, F equals MA, with a little algebra, I get. 26.125 kilonewtons, 26,125 newtons. Yeah, that'll pick the front end up in the air. Not only that, that's three Gs. It'll slam you back into your seat. So Newton's second law, F is MA, A is V minus V naught over T, and I can combine them when I need to. F is M, the quantity V minus V naught over T.